you. This is sort of a fun. Because you know I'm all about that base. Whoops, sorry. That base, no acid. I'm all about that base. Thought that base, no acid. I'm all about that base. Thought that base, no acid. I'm all about that base. About that base, base, base. Yeah, it's pretty clear, I ain't no science fool So you got litmus litmus, well I can turn it blue Make it go boom boom all over the place When all the H plus meet all the OHs Pink phenolphthalein, I think that's straight dope Mix in a lipid here and it'll make it soap You want it neutral, neutral, pH is low Better set up a titration with a strong hydroxyl drop Yeah, my lab tech, she told me don't worry about your eyes it's a mess it gets in, then we just have to neutralize. You know I love me, my stomach, and all the things it dissolves. But my bowel that keeps it from meeting my intestine walls. Because you know I'm all about that base, about that base, no acid. I'm all about that base, about that base, no acid. I'm all about that base, about that base, no acid. I'm all about that base, about that base. I'm gonna do the math to figure out the ratios to react. Stoichiometry, yeah, that's where it's at. And it'll tell you. To prepare a base one molar for your strong hydroxyl drop. Yeah, my lab tech, she told me, don't worry about your eyes. Cause if acid gets in, we can fix it with alkali. That oh, we know I love me, my stomach, and all the things it dissolves. But my bond that keeps it from meeting my intestine walls. Because you know I'm all about that base, about that base, no acid. I'm all about that base, about that base, no acid. I'm all about that base, about that base, no acid. I'm all about that base, about that base. Because you know I'm all about that base, about that base, no acid. I'm all about that base, about that base, no acid. I'm all about that base, about that base, no acid. I'm all about that base, about that base. So acids are sour like a what? Lemon. Lemon. And bases are bitter like? So, okay, so what are the strong acids? What does strong mean? This is just review, real quick. How much ionization? So strong means what? 100%. So it's very strong. They put split in the ions. So weak means what? They don't ionize as much, 1 to 5%, right? So strong acids, remember the swooping down. We've got our oxy acids and we've got our binary acids, right? And then our strong bases was a tetris pattern. Sometimes they include our rubidium and cesium and make a B over there, but rubidium and cesium are hard to come by, so usually they don't. Okay, so remember, we've got Arrhenius in the center, and its definition was H plus and OH minus. We've got... Um, Bronsted Lowry, one step out, proton donor for the acid, proton acceptor for the base. And one more step out from that, we've got Lewis, and Lewis is an electron pair um, acceptor and electron pair donor for the base. Now, on Lewis, you make one compound, so it goes to one thing. Bronsted Lowry, your product is usually got charges. And uh, Arrhenius, you make water and a salt. Okay? So going forward, we, we should have already known this, acid range under 7, base range over 7, 7 is neutral. And no matter if you're acid or base, both hydroxide and hydrogen concentration are present all the time. You did that home lab. Hopefully you realized something from that home lab. What did you test most of? Did you get mostly acids or bases? <laughs> acids. If you look at the things here, most of the things we eat are acids. If you look past 7 this way, what are you seeing? 
faces, but cleaners. Yeah, it's not stuff you really want to eat. Okay. Um, you have a couple of important equations here that we need to make sure that you um, know or put on your card. If any time you do a P, that means you're going minus the log. Notice the KW and the PHOH equation. This one adds to 7, this one times to 10 to the minus 14. Or adds to 14, sorry. And this one down here, anytime you want to get the concentration, you go 10 to the minus P, whatever. Okay, so you've got this lovely thing here, okay? I went through that with another group. Let's go right here. This is the other one I want to annoy you with really quick. Because it gets in your head and helps you remember Bronsted and Lowry. Bronsted and Lowry had a theory which they came up with independently. In chemistry, the difference between an acid and a base is a base except a proton which an acid donates. When litmus turns from red to blue it indicates a change in solution from an acid to a base. In chemistry, the difference between an acid and a base is a base except a proton which an acid donates. The pH scale lets you see the level of acidity. Above pH 7 is where bases go. pH 7 is neutral with acids below. In chemistry, the difference between an acid and a base is a base except a proton which an acid donates. The pH scale lets you see the level of acidity. The difference between an acid and a base is a base except a proton which an acid donates. The difference between an acid and a base is a base except a proton which an acid donates. It was just a really quick little song, but it gets in your head, and you know now, on a Bronsted-Lowry, what is a base? What does a base do? Saps a proton. What does the acid do? Donates it. So it's sort of stuck in your head. Um, and you saw the Lewis dot on there. I liked how they showed you exactly what was happening with the Lewis dot. So how are we doing as far as being able to calculate pH, pOH, OH concentration, H plus concentration, how are we doing? Are you understanding it, doing okay? It's pretty simple equation math wise, you just plug it in, right? And you need to be able to do that. Now, I want you to bring up um, your Logger Pro. So find Logger Pro on your computer and bring it up. Did everybody find it? I promise I won't take much more of your time so you can get working on your sapling. But I want the slab next time to go smooth, so. Mine's coming up, it's just real slow. How's yours coming? Not even let me move it over to the other side yet. Pause this. So when you go do your lab next time, when you do your titration lab next time, and you've done the titration, and this time instead of looking for a pink color, you're going to go drop by drop, and you're going to you're actually going to go 0.5 milliliters. You're going to add, and you'll do events with entry and you'll stop it, and it'll grab the pH, and you'll write down how much you add it. So it will graph it for you as you go, okay? When you get all done, and a, T a pH probe... All right, so what you're going to do then is you're going to get a graph, and it's going to look like from an acid, it's going to come and come up like this. That's your titration curve, okay? The weaker the acid, the closer to 7 it's going to be, and the titration curve is not going to be as big. If I start with a base, it starts up here, and then it migrates down, okay? 
So what you're going to do in order to get your data in is you're going to go up to the calculator with a tell and you'll click on it. And you'll say USD Direct and you'll say refresh the calendar calculator or refresh the catalog. I've got one here so I'm going to plug it in real quick. I hope it has some data on it that we can use. If not, we'll... Okay, so you won't be able to get the data up but you'll be able to follow me through the buttons. And sometimes you have to keep going over and refreshing the catalog. The thing that you need to remember on this really carefully is you need to be out of easy data before you hook it up to the computer. So you have to get all the way out of easy data because if you try and load up your data while you're still in easy data, it won't load. Okay? So if it doesn't work, and sometimes it doesn't, you just move up to another one, you scan for device, and you keep scanning until it finally finds it. And sometimes it's a pain in the butt, and I will let you know that right away. Um, there it goes. See how it's, it finally found me? And hopefully it'll come up. Uh, oh, it went away. How nice of it. That's very sweet. There you go. Okay, so it brought up L1 and L2. You will be bringing in L1 and L2. I don't know what's in there right now, so I'm going to just say okay. And it should populate L1 and L2 if there's anything in there. And there's not. <laughs> so just, just for kicks and giggles, just take and on the first one, just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like we would have brought something in. On the second one, start like at two and do um, something like this and then go really high. Whoops. They went the wrong way. Let's try this again. Two. I wasn't looking while I was typing. 3.5, 3.7, 4 4.8, and then I'm going to jump 8.9, 9, 9.8, 10.7, 11.8, and 12.8. Okay, so I've got my, my data in there. Okay, it should pull it right in for you. Mine didn't have any data to pull in. But when it pulls it in, what you're going to do is, first off, you're going to double click on the L1, and that will be your um, amount of milliliters of NaOH that you add. Okay? So over here, I just put NaOH on my short one, and I would st I'd say done. On this one right here, L2, that is where your pH is going to be. So I'm going to put pH, and short name, of course, would be still pH, and I'd say done. Okay. Then to get the graph to show, I double-click the graph, and I'm going to put the title. So this one is the strong acid and base titration. Okay. And I want to do the point symbols, and I want to collect the po or connect the points. I want to also go now into Oxy's options, okay? And I want to make sure the things that I want um, are clicked. You'll notice I've got this little teeny itty bitty graph that showed up right here. I don't want an itty bitty teeny graph. I want to be able to see it. So it, it's sort of backwards, but instead of saying auto scale larger, you just say auto scale on both of these. And when I say done, it pops up. Okay? Now, I can add, um, when we print, I can add our names. But the other thing I need from this is a second derivative. And this one we haven't done before. So we need to add another column. So I need to skinny this up. And I need to enlarge this. And I need to go up into insert. Is it insert? No. Data. Data, new, new calculated column, because I don't want to have to figure it out myself. I want the computer to do it. Okay? So you pick new calculated column. And once I've got that, I'm going to, instead of say CC, I want the second derivative. So I'm going to go SD. And I'm going to say, instead of calculated column, second derivative. Okay? And then I come down here to functions. Under functions, I'm going to go to calculus because second derivative is a calculus thing, and I'm going to pick second derivative. Now, what do I want the second derivative of? I want it to be of um, 
get rid of the, my pH. And then I just say done. Now I can put another graph on here um, where I say second derivative and say done. And I can see where it goes across. Now I can also add my first derivative by doing the same thing if I want to. So um, insert, whoops, nope, data, new calculated column. And this would be first derivative. And FD this time and functions, calculus, derivative, and variable, pH, and done. And again, I click this, and I come in and say, I want to see that too. And it will tell me about where it should be. Now, I jumped a big part here. Usually, we'll see a peak in one of these. But where this crosses the zero line, that is my point of inflection. That is a point at which is my end of my titration. Okay, so instead of trying to guess where on this line it actually is, my second derivative by where it crosses the zero tells me exactly where I ended. Okay, now I recorded this. You can go back over it again. You're going to need to do this for every titration run that you do. Okay, you can print all of them on the same graph, but when you print it off, if you don't use the color printer, you're going to need to use. Um, some colored pencils to go over it so that when you put in your lab notebook, we know what's what. And do some, you know, color the top of the column. Questions? Okay, time's yours. <laughs>